That's how we f up. Can't say f <laughs> You can't say f Well, you keep saying it now. Oh. We don't get royalties. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Backyard Builds. Thanks for joining us in 2021, guys. This year, we're hoping to bring you more content and more updates on our projects. So to start off 2021, we are back on the Turbo Ute. A lot of you have asked for updates and we just haven't had a... Yeah, the end of 2020, we uh, both got smashed with work. Simply just ran out of time to get together and actually have some time on the Ute. Yeah, so you guys all saw the chassis that Zach started on over the break. We're gonna try and bring you more updates on that as we sort of work on it as well. Also, let us know if there's, in the comments, if there's anything that you'd like us to cover in more detail. So any more like fab work, welding tips and tricks, anything like that that you've seen us do. Um, so anything fabrication, or even let us know if you want to know any more about the mysterious life and times of Saxon. Yeah, well, there's plenty to cover in that section. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a whole series on its <laughs> own. <laughs> um, today's episode, we're going to start working on the unit, as I said. We've got this diff in front of us. That's the Falcon diff we got off Saxon last year, yeah. years ago. We're actually going to tear all the brakes, all the brackets off it today. We're going to get it all cleaned up, cut the old leaf spring mounts off, and we're going to cut it down because we need a diff that is about this much bigger, shorter. Yeah, we measured it. It's 1622 at the moment, and we need it 1290. So we got it's only a little bit out of it. All right, let's get into it. Three meter flatties. <laughs> <laughs> Catch and beat. We have taken our back cover off. We actually tipped it up, let all the oil come out. Also took a quick trip to Super Cheap, so shout out to Super Cheap and Aussie Export. <laughs> Five cans for ten dollars. You bet we bought fifteen cans. Um, we're gonna just a quick spray with the degreaser, just letting it drain out now. So next step will be to take the axles out. So we'll undo the bearing retainer plates. Not we're not hundred percent sure if the circuit can't see if they are, so... Don't think they are. We'll undo it, try and pull the axle out. If the axle doesn't come, they're probably circlipped, and then we'll look at it again. So we'll just let the degreaser drain out while we do that, and um, keep going. We've got all the axles out. We are pretty well disassembled. We're going to leave the center in there because we don't really want to pull it out to shit. Because we kind of want to skid the shit out of it first and blow that to pieces, and then we'll swap it. Um, what we've just done is measured from mounting face to mounting face. And they give us a measurement of 1503. We then went back to the car and worked out where the tunnel sits because we want to get that pinion snub lined up with the transmission so it's a nice straight line all the way through. We'll actually show you when we go to set up the leaf rings, we'll put a laser on the back of the transmission and line it all up and we can center the diff side to side. Um, then we worked out all our measurements for cutting. So we've gone from the inside measurement of the disc face to the inside edge of the rail on both sides and then measured to the centre of the tunnel on both sides and that gave us a total measurement of 1275 which is a little bit narrower than our original estimate of 1290 
but that's fine because it brings the wheels in seven and a half mil each way which we're going to afford to do because we've got a huge space between a tire or between the wheel and the rail so we're not as concerned about that um, we have then worked out our cut size so because we need to get that pin snub center it means we need to take a different amount off each side so we went back through and did a whole heap of math i'm not going to explain it to you we ended up with 145.5 on the passenger side tube and 209.5 on the driver side tube we need to cut out so what we're going to do now is just rip these old spring mounts off we're going to keep the old handbrake cable rackets but we're going to cut them off as neat as we can these ones can stay they're not in the way clean it all up get it all nice sand it down flat and as round as we can we're then going to come in probably about 100 mil from here and cut this off in the saw so we get a nice square cut we're then going to take the ends off to a machinist and see if he can actually machine the original bearing retainer out of the tube because um, we'd like to then re-sleeve those back into the new axles and mount it weld it all back up and should be happy days pretty wise per factory weld yep exactly as it would be per factory um, we're also going to cut the axles down and shorten those temporarily purely just so we can keep it rolling um, we don't have it in the budget yet to go and get billet axles made so we're just going to cut and shut the original axle and we'll probably skid those and wait till they break until we build a diff so yeah we're well told up so yeah we're going to get all this cleaned up now and get it in the saw Grab the grinder. You're on the grinder today. Right. Alright, so it's hot in here because Bill hasn't organised the guy to come around with the air conditioner yet. Cheers, not, Bill. Not like Zach's place where it's air conditioned. Not where it's 17 degrees all year round. Alright Zach, so just going to do a bit of a tech tip on sanding tube. So we're just using a backing pad, so they're just plastic, you can get them in rubber, and a sanding pad. So where can, where can the viewers get those Zach? Any industrial supplies. Yep. Like, I, found, I found this one at Total Tools, they're on sale for 15 bucks. I bought mine from M&G Industrial Supplies in Fishwick. Yep. Shout out to Mark. And you can get the pads on eBay, they're like fucking 30 cents a disc, Ten, just shop around. So, just going to do a quick tech tip. Sanding tube. So, normally when people sand tube, they go across it like this. What it does is leave flat spots. So, I'll do a little bit there. It leaves little flat spots, it doesn't look very good. So whenever we sand tube, we sand with the tube itself. So, so as you can see by sanding with the tube, it keeps it flat and it keeps it looking nice. So it doesn't look like it's been sculpted out. Yeah, so sometimes you might not be able to do it like that. You're up against a, a flange, etc. Just and do a sack just and like really toe in on it. Yeah. Saxon loves a dig. Yeah. Excavator King. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you can't do it. A flappy wheel won't get that finish. Um, and you won't always get that straight away. Like Zach's gone through and ground a lot of this off. And then we've hit it with that sanding pad. So if that was like a stainless handrail and you went across it instead of with it, it'd be extremely hard to polish and get a nice finish on. Yeah. So we're gonna finish off the tubes like that where we've cut stuff off clean it all up, and then we'll get it mounted up in the saw. made a small mistake so last video you would have just seen was us cutting the tubes of the bandsaw we took the tube around to Tom's house 
uh, Tom's dad's house as a lathe. So this is what we were hoping to get. So as you can see, these are for my nine inch for my chassis build. They're nice and tight in there. They'll sleeve in once it's pushed on straight. Took our AU diff around. So took our end around and that's what we got, which was less than ideal. Thumbs down. So Saxon asked for a shout out. So this is a shout out to Saxon. Went out and seen him this morning. Here's one he prepared earlier. So this is another AU center that Saxon painstakingly took the time to drill all the spot welds out. Just for us. Just for us. He was actually gonna use it as a jig to set a diff with for a car. Um, anyway, he doesn't need it anymore. That's what he thinks anyway, so don't tell him he doesn't not need it. Well, it's and not going back now. No, we've taken it off him. <laughs> so it's got the axle tubes out. So all we'll do now is cut the tube down, slide it back in, heat it, and redo the factory plug welds. So it'll essentially look like a really short AU Falcon diff from factory. So what we've done to keep it all together is, again, we went to Tom's dad's house. He's machined us up a, a flat puck. So square edge on this one. What it does is it goes into the bearing race. Tighten it up on that. Doesn't move nice and tight. If I talk it up. Yeah, to spec. Yeah. Just to spec. Yeah. <laughs> he also made his two with tapers on them. So what they'll do is pull in on the that one's still got a bearing cone in it that pulls in where the bearing cone would sit. They all have 30mm ID holes, so run a big length of threaded rod down the center and it should hold everything straight while we plug weld and weld her up. So we'll put that together now, tack it together, chop the tubes down, tack it together, hopefully maybe put the brakes back on it, back in plates at least, and uh, slide it under the ute and see how it looks. Diff down. Uh, it looks really short, but we know it's right from our measurements. What we're doing now is just cut the same amount out of the axles as we cut out of the diff, put it all back together, slide it under the car, put the wheels on it, and just check that our width was correct. But it's a bit late now if it's not. Bottom this diff back together now, it's a bit shorter. Hey Tom, why does that axle sit all the way in there? Ah, uh, Saxon gave us the wrong axle. Saxon gave us the wrong axle. So, it's a bit short on that side now. And I'm 90 degrees out from my eyes here. 
It's like he doesn't want to see this project finished or something. He's just fighting us every step of the way, isn't he? Goddamn Saxon. Saxon. Thanks again for the diff, man. It's a nice housing, factory look.